Hey guys, this is Moltanen and welcome to another exciting tutorial. Today I've decided to do something uh, a little bit different than the usual, however strongly related to After Effects, but also Photoshop and Flash. We're going to design our own Pixel Bender plugin for After Effects. Please note that you can only develop your own Pixel Bender plugins for After Effects CS4 and above. We're going to do a very, very simple cropping plugin because there simply isn't one in After Effects. Of course, we do have masks that we can use, but you know, it's hard to animate them uh, with expressions, for example, and we could kind of crop the image using like multiple copies of linear wipe with 0% feathering, but you know, that's, that's kind of a overkill for a simple crop. And besides, it's a very simple example to understand, easy to follow, so you know, I was kind of hoping that maybe you'll get hooked into making your own plugins as much as I did. So, uh, let's get started. This is the default window of your Pixel Bender toolkit. Right from the start, you can either create a new kernel, which is the actual code that, you know, changes pixels, or a new graph. If you're going to develop plugins your own, I would recommend always starting with the graph even if the effect you're developing is really simple like this one. However, to keep this simple, we're going to create a new kernel. So we click on the new kernel and we're just going to name our kernel cropping. Here we can define our namespace and other meta info for the plugin. So uh, first thing, let's just try to load an image to our pixel vendor. Let's just pick one. Um, yeah, maybe this one. Why not? As you can see, we have the picture in here. And now we can start playing with the pixels. What you have here are two variables that are defined for you. The first one is the input image, it's the whole image. And the other one is just the output pixel. What you need to understand is that Pixel Bender plugins are not aware, like totally not aware of what they are processing, how big the input image is and such. Of course, you can kind of get to that info, but you can't really use them to create like an averaging plugin, you know, that averages pixels, something like color link would be really hard to do. Mostly because this code that you put here in the evaluate pixel function is executed for every single pixel. So you can't like grab all the image and, you know, gather all, all the statistics info and then do something with it. You can just perform actions on each and every pixel. So that's the perfect example for the cropping because all we have to do is we have to have like two points, crop top point and crop bottom point, and then check whether or not a pixel that is being processed at the time is within the boundaries of our uh, cropping area. If it is, we're gonna leave the alpha channel as it is, unchanged, and if it's not, we're just gonna set it to zero. So pretty simple stuff. Okay, right now, this plugin does nothing. It simply samples the current pixel and puts that to our output variable, as you can see. So when I click run, nothing really happens. Just to show you how that works, I can, for example, add something to the red channel. Let's try that. So I'm just gonna say plus and now the output format is pixel four. That means it has four values, R, G, B, and A. So if I want to add something to that, I need to add also a four point value, just like a four point RA in After Effects, or if you're working in you know 3D layers, you create those brackets and then you put like X, Y, and Z, this is the same. So I'm gonna add float four, or pixel four, really, those are pretty much the same. And I'm going to say uh, one, comma, and then zero, zero, and zero. So I'm adding only to the red channel. Green, blue, and alpha stay unchanged. Let's see if this works. Okay, it works. Maybe that's a little bit too much, so let's just add like uh, 0.3 and see how that works. Okay, you get the picture. Let's get rid of this. Also, we have the 
out chord function which gives you the current pixel that is being processed its position so it's x and y coordinates so uh, just to keep things simpler i'm going to create a new variable which is going to be type float i'm going to call this position and i'm going to say that is equal to out chords and that's it and right now i can replace this code with our variable just like we do in after effects right okay good so right now all we need to do is to define the parameters so let's just do that right now i'm going to say parameter float to because it has two dimensions x and y let's call this p crop top and parameter float p crop bottom if i hit run you're going to see those parameters displayed in here x and y and x and y their default range is from 0 to 1 but we can change that and here again you can't really set the range to be from 0 to as much as needed so to 5 7 6 in this case you can't really do that so just for the sake of this demo let's say that we want the minimum value to be and now we also have to say float 0, 0 0.0 and 0, 0.0 and we want the max value to be float uh, 500 by 500. We also need to define the default value and the default value will be float 2 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0 okay and now we can close the meta info and let's see if that works oh i forgot to put the uh okay now it should do okay so crop top should have a better range right now yes and that works as you see but crop bottom still works only from zero to one okay so let's just copy those metadata here and just change the default value to 500 by 500 because we want this to be the bottom crop hit run okay as you can see the default value for the crop bottom is now 500 and we can change it so now the only thing left to do is to check whether or not this point is within the boundaries of our crop area so to do that we simply type in if current position so pos on the x-axis is larger or equal our p crop top x right simple and now we do the same thing for for the y and for the crop bottom x and y so if our position on the x is larger or equal our crop top point on the X and position Y is larger or equal P crop top on the Y and our current position on the X is less or equal P crop bottom on the X and our current position on the y is less or equal p crop bottom on the y ah then alpha of our final pixel so dst as destination because that's our output dot a which is alpha channel equals one And in any other case, it should be zero. And 
this should work. Let's see. Ha. Huh. We hit run and as you can see when we change the crop bottom and crop top it actually works as we'd expect it. Of course this code has a flaw because if the point is within the cropping area we set the alpha channel to 1 which is not correct because if the image we're processing has an alpha channel of its own then we don't want to override it. So actually we don't need to put any code in here and we should change this condition but you know just to keep things simple and clear I'll just comment this one out and say maybe do nothing it's all cool baby and in any other case just set it to zero this should work as well as you can see so um, how do you actually put that into After Effects and make it work with whatever size of the image we have. Well, for After Effects, there are certain special metadata that we are allowed to use. So I'm just gonna tidy this up a little bit and make it like that. So that you can see it better. Okay, and the special metadata are we can define what type of the control we want to give to this parameter. So in this case we want this to be a point controller. So we say AE UI as in user interface control AE point. And the cool thing about this is that we can get rid of minimum and maximum values and instead use this AE point relative default value well that's a mouthful is float to 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0 and the keyword here is relative so in this case of course it doesn't really matter because 0.0, .0 is always going to be in the left top corner but if we would do the same thing for the crop bottom and we would say 1.0 and 1.0 this would actually mean the size of the layer we are applying the effect to so that's kind of cool okay the other thing is we want to give this parameter a uh, nice display name right in the controller so let's say ae display name crop top and i guess that will be it let's go ahead and copy those over to our crop bottom and just say crop bottom and change this to one and one and it should be exactly the same However, now when we run this inside the development toolkit, we get our values back to one and one, which kind of sucks. And to actually test this, we need to go back to After Effects. But before we do, we can add a few more parameters to this. And let's change the description to simple cropping plugin. Let's say vendor my loyal fans because this is for you guys right and then namespace we can put pretty much whatever in here but usually what you put there is like your domain name in reverse so in my case that would be com dot maltanen that's how you know programmers do it so let's leave it at like that and uh to be honest with you if we want to make this a real proper you know by the book plugin we would also need to add a couple of functions that I won't mention in here because I don't want to make it over complicated which I think it might already be that but you know whatever um, I lost track of what I was doing um, oh yeah this there's one more thing we can put here which is called category 
category and we want to say maltanen.com and I think that's it still should be running it is so let's just save this and we want to save this in our Adobe After Effects CS4 support files plugins and here we can say simple cropping and hit save. Hopefully everything will work so the only thing left to do is to open up After Effects and now let's just import some footage. Here we have a nice photo of the uh, city skyline and let's just go back to full resolution and zoom back and check if we have our simple cropping in the maltanon.com group. And guess what? We do. So we just apply the cropping. As you see, nothing happened because now the relative default value was set to one. So the crop bottom is set to the actual dimensions of the image. And now we can simply grab those two points, as you see, and just move them around. And we have a nice, simple cropping plugin. So let's now see if it works with the alpha channel, okay? So let's get rid of this and pre-compose this, move all attributes and create a fake alpha channel for this. Um, maybe its own luminance channel, how about, how about that? Set matte like that and let's say luminance. Okay, that works for me, I guess. Let's just go back to this comp and apply cropping. And yep, it works. As you can see, the original alpha channel is unchanged and we've got a nice cropping plugin. Now you can, for example, wiggle the parameters, you know, do all that nice stuff. Maybe do, you know, create some, some nice motion graphics. Who knows? But remember, Pixel Bender is capable of doing much, much more. As you probably already saw on my website, I've got a couple of Pixel Bender plugins in there already. And uh, for example, the last one I believe is the Bitwiser, which is meant for changing the bit depth of your 8-bit photos, actually upping them from 8 bits per channel to 32 bits per channel. And once again, here's a quick overview of how it works. Fast blur. Let's apply fast blur to the image. If we blur it out 30, for example, we lose all the highlights in the really hot areas. Even if we go to 32 bits per channel mode, it's still the same, but not when you apply the Bitwiser before applying the blur. Bitwiser light. And there you go. All the highlights are restored and it looks more natural right now. So this is just a simple example of a very simple plugin. As you see, there are literally no parameters in this, but there's also another one which is called UVlizer and it allows you to add textures to your 3D objects in After Effects after rendering. So you don't have to render everything from your 3D application. You can actually render a UV pass or a normal pass and add textures or reflections. There's a whole tutorial about this, so make sure to check this one out. So if you got interested with, you know, making your own Pixel Bender plugins, make sure to go to Adobe Labs slash technology slash Pixel Bender and download the latest version of the Pixel Bender toolkit and read all the requirements. Simply follow those instructions and you're ready to go. So once again, my name is Maltanen. Thanks for your time. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. Happy after effecting.